products in your business. But I thought it'd be really good just to take a breather for tonight, Sunday night, before we start a week, a lot of you still work um, nine to fives that you have to clock in tomorrow. First thing you got to get your kids up and go to school. You have so much on your plate just to take a minute, breathe and say, okay, how can I just get my mind in the right place tonight? And so um, I'm not going to lie to you and pretend that I have my act together tonight because I have like pages of notes. It's not that I don't, I, I literally have like pages of notes, but I don't know if what will come out is on this paper. It's almost like maybe I feel a shift. So I'm not sure if I have it smooth, but I'm hoping it will help you guys tonight because I never want to come from a place that's like, hey, this is where I'm really good at. So I'm going to teach you how to be good at it too. It's more of like, wow, this is where I'm failing miserably. And so maybe you might feel exactly the same way or this is where I struggle, no matter what rank I'm at, these are some of the areas that seem to still haunt me. And so maybe it's something that you struggle with too. And so I always want to just keep it real. And so I was telling um, Kelly, one of our leaders before this, that, you know, I had these notes, but I just feel like my mind's kind of all over the place right now. And then I went to church this weekend and that didn't help any because um, my pastor preached like an incredible sermon. So it's like, I kind of want to go to that, but I'm like, that's for another day. But one thing that he said to um, us in the sermon that just stuck out so much is he was talking about how him and his family travel a lot and his wife loves to take like all these tourist type of things and he absolutely hates them. But that when they went to Alcatraz, they did a guided tour and it was actually one that he was super interested in. And he shows us this picture at church on the screen of a moment in the tour. He's got his headphones on and you can see him standing and you can see um, the city of San Francisco all like, it's only like a mile offshore. There's some water in between and you can like just see it right there in front of him. And he was saying that that moment was so like just impactful because it was a prison and that these were prisoners who could view the opportunity in front of them, that they could see what was in front of them. They can even hear or almost like, almost touch what freedom was, but they were in prison. So he was pointing that out in his sermon this weekend. And it hit me that in network marketing and this business and what we do every single day, it sometimes feels that way. It feels like we can see our dream life. We can see what this opportunity can do, that we can see what's available to us and, and how we can change what our past look like and what our future can be but we're in prison to our own mindset and it's holding us back. And so although we see it, although we can hear it, although we can taste it, we can't seem to get to it. And so I don't know if you get in that place, but for me, that's where I struggle sometimes is to find that connection between what I see and what I allow myself to be imprisoned by. And I know we preach mindset so often. It, so often that sometimes it scares me that we can get in the mundane robotic mode of what we do as women. Um, and we can kind of get into this place where it's like, yeah, I, I listened to a podcast today. So I self-developed and it's like, but sometimes we never self-identify. And so I wanted to take a Sunday night, a few minutes, just a few minutes, if you will, with me to just self-reflect tonight. After we get off this call, get a pen and paper and I labeled this skin in the game because um, I feel like it hit me that you can be on a team and you can know the game and you can know how to play the game and you can even win a game but be sitting on a bench. So I wanted just to put this whole little prison mindset and skin in the game analogy together and try to encourage you to really get to that point where you're in the game. And so when you're thinking of a team, you always have those people that are on the court. You have the people that are on the bench. When you win again, a win a game though, both can say they're winners, but one played and one didn't. And so I want you to get to the point where you might be 
participating. You might be showing up. You might be posting and doing just enough to say, I'm in a winning season, but you're not in the game. Is your skin in the game? And so I wanted just to encourage you that what you have is so important. This is so much bigger than an enrollment. It's so much bigger than you just, you know, showing up and doing some daily tasks that make you better. No, this is about actually becoming better. It's not just doing better. It's being better. And what you have and what you can see for your future is so important. So for me, I know that I have to get skin in the game this week, this month, this future time that's coming up. I got to get my skin in the game. I can't sit at a bench and call it a win. I got to get on the court. I got to make the moves. I got to get hurt. I got to get that pressure put on me. So when you're playing on a court, we always like say like pressure makes diamonds, right? And like, it's always, we like kind of have these cute Pinterest quotes that kind of, you know, magically make pressure sound better, but pressure is hard and it's not always easy, but it's pressure that creates opportunities. Without pressure, we don't even have the opportunity to move. You don't have pressure on a bench, but when you're on the court and someone's coming to you and you got a ball in your hand, you got two seconds to think what your next move's going to be. You have two seconds to make that move, that turn, that shift. And that's why I love always preaching pressure. I love always trying to remind you guys that pain is preparation, that it's uncomfortable seasons that actually grow you because we live in a time where we don't want the pressure. We want to sit on the bench and call it a win, but you're not, you're not made for that. Girl, you are made to get in the game, get your skin in the game, get that pressure on you, have people coming towards you where you got to make moves and you got to make moves that cause you to think fast and do things that you're uncomfortable with, with no outcome. You're not guaranteed anything, but it's in those moments that you're putting skin in the game. And so tonight, I just wanted to ask you, are you playing in the game? Are you putting skin in the game? I'm going to say that so much tonight, and I hope it doesn't annoy you, but I hope it, it pushes you to see the difference from playing on a team and actually leaving your heart and soul on a court or stepping up to a plate or whatever game you want to use as an analogy. Um, I feel like it's time though as women and it's time as a team, we have an incredible team, but it's time we all get our skin in the game because we've got people depending on us, not just my family and your family, not just our friends, not just people who need us. There are people that you don't even know yet, that you haven't even contacted yet that need you to get in the game now so that they have the potential to get in the game in the future so that they can see the hope that's available to them. And when you get your skin, so sorry, going backwards, um, they say like skin in the game. I always like reference it as like a sports analogy, but I actually heard one time it's um, being used as um, an investment analogy that skin in the game is, can be like referred to as like when a CEO um, invests his own money into his own company's stock because that just proves how much faith he has in what he's doing. And that's like called putting skin in the game. Like, it's like, Hey, I'm going to risk my own to prove to you that this is something of worth. And so when you're thinking of it, yeah, you can think of it as like a team or a sports or playing or whatever. But I also want you to think of it from that investment point of view. Are you investing yourself in this business and who you're becoming? Are you putting skin in the game in that kind of way that people can trust you because they see what you um, have faith in? Are you really excited about what you're doing? Are you really showing up with pure confidence? Are you really believing in yourself? It's easy to say, oh yeah, I believe in myself, but you're actually trapped in this mindset that is convincing you otherwise. And it's time to sit back, reflect and say, do I have skin in the game? I have to have skin in the game. 
I got three sets of eyes that are looking at me as a mom and I don't want to feed them ramen noodles again. I don't want to go back to the girl I was. I don't want to look at my kids and say, you know what? Mommy can't fight depression. So you might have to deal with it too. I don't want to look at my marriage and say, this might fail because I can't boss up. I don't want to go back to um, someone else telling me what clothes I have to wear, how many hours I have to work, what I'm worth for my pay, what, what time I'm allowed to have. I don't want that. I don't want to go back to that. So I have got to get in the game. I have got to invest myself in what I'm doing. I can't play from the sidelines. I got to show up and leave my heart on the court because I got people depending on me and I don't want to go back and I don't want to play um, half ass. I don't want to just give a little bit to see if it works. I don't have that option. And I hope that when you look at what you have a hold of, you realize you don't have that option either. You are meant to be somebody. You have purpose in you. You have a family worth fighting for. You have freedom in front of you. Please, to God, do not look at your life and see the opportunity available from you, but sit in a prison that you cannot get to it. Don't let a mile of water keep you from what you could have just because you're stuck in what you think you deserve. And so, I have to. And when you put skin in the game, you can't walk away. I can tell you, uh, you can, I mean, it would take a lot of convincing for me to tell me that someone has skin in the game, but can walk away. You can't walk away when you have skin in the game, because that's not just a game. That's your investment. That's your soul. That's you showing up. That's your family. I have too much invested in my healing. I can't go back to the girl I was. Like I said, I have too much invested in my growth. When I started this business, I committed to being vulnerable. I committed to growing. I committed to stepping up to the uncomfortable to saying hello to a new person, to not looking back, but only looking forward, to pushing myself. I'm committed and invested that when it's stressful, I'm showing up. When I'm pay cuts happen, I'm showing up. When the enrollments don't come in, I'm showing up. When the team walks away, I'm showing up. When life gets busy, I'm still showing up because my investment is in this game and it's not a game it's our lives it's our livelihood it's who we're meant to be and i feel like today i just wanted to take a minute to ask you are you in the game are you on a bench claiming a win or are you leaving skin on the game um let me look at my notes because i kind of went off a little bit i'm sure um let's see so I kind of got off subject, <laughs> but sorry, I'm going to try to ream it back in and go this way because that's where it was. But sometimes it is more comfortable for you to sit on a bench. Most people will act as if they want to play the game, right? They want to, um, they want to say that they won and they want the glory that comes from the position but they also are more comfortable sitting on a bench and laying low and only giving a little bit because to get in the game and to play a move and to have to act fast and deal with the pressure and all eyes on you and you, you know, creating this life, that's hard. And it's sometimes we want to be successful so bad that we avoid failure which sounds like a good plan, right? It sounds good that if you wanna be successful, avoid failure, but failure actually is the steps to success. And so sometimes what we do is we feel more successful on a bench. We feel more successful from the sidelines because it's, it's comfortable or because it feels good and, and we can predict it and it's familiar. And so getting on the court is, it it takes vulnerability. It takes you um, leaving your comfort zone. It takes stepping out in faith. It's it takes people looking at you and seeing what you're doing. It takes you putting out your dreams out there for people to possibly walk all over or make fun of. It it takes having that pressure sink in. And so sometimes what we do is we tend to 
want the court and maybe jump on the court and maybe dribble the ball and then run back to the sidelines and be like, you know what, actually I'm cool here. This is, this is safe zone and I can just do this and be good. And every time you do that, you're putting yourself back into an open prison, a prison that has a door that's open and you're just choosing to sit inside of it. You're just choosing to stay locked into that comfortability. And so we don't want to fail. We want to be successful. So sometimes our success is in our self-sabotage is what I'm trying to say. Does that make sense? I don't even know if I said that like clear, but I hope you can understand what I'm saying. Sometimes we feel successful going back to the girl that we were before this because we know her. And the girl that we're becoming is not familiar to us. That's hard for us to identify. We don't know what it's like. We don't know this pressure. We don't know what it's like to show up consistently. We don't know how to build that integrity because we never had to before. Now we do. Now we have to commit. Now we have to show up. Now we have a team depending on us. Now we have a family depending on us. Now our growth is important. Now our mindset's important. And that's very new. And so when it's new, it's unfamiliar. And sometimes what we can do is self-sabotage ourselves to avoid that because it's unfamiliar. Um, Stephen Furtick put it this way. I, I usually repost this a lot and I probably butcher it right now because I'm trying to think of it on the whim, but the certainty of, uh, oh, I'm going to mess it up. Oh, it's so good. Hold on. It's I don't remember the words, but it's like the certainty of familiarity is better than the uncertainty of freedom for some people. That sometimes you want familiar more than you want freedom. And sometimes you're missing your own miracle because you can't allow your mindset to get out of the way. You're sitting in a prison that's holding you back from where you need to go. And so um, I know that sometimes what we can do is pretend we're playing. We can, we can do just enough to look like we're playing, but we're not leaving the skin in the game. You have to invest. That looks different for other people. For me, that meant opening up with my story. That meant sharing that I don't have it perfectly together. I, I had to admit that I have issues that, that cripple me on a daily, that that hold me back. And for me to push through them is hard. It's hard every day. I sometimes take one step forward and 85 back. But then the next day I get up and I say, it's time. I got to leave skin in the game. It's time. I got to play again. It's time. Give me the ball because I'm ready because I'm becoming someone and I can't give up on that person. And even though it's scary and even though it's unknown, she deserves to have that life that she dreamed of, and so do you. And so um, will you put skin in the game when it's hard? Will you put skin in the game with the unknown? Will you put skin in the game when your friends leave you, when you lose team members, when you lose rank? Are you still committed? Are you still investing in that moment? Are you investing in the woman that you're becoming? Or have you become almost mundane to this, that it's a checklist of what you're accomplishing without actually showing up in the game, if that makes sense. I don't even know if I am. I'm blabbering again. Um, let me see what I have in my notes really quick because I have a lot of notes, but I didn't look at them. Um, Every time that, yeah, I have a ton of notes, but I'm not going to look at them because I think they're going to get me off. But um, this is good, actually. Just kidding. I'm going to use this note right here. Um, it it kind of goes back to like what I was saying is I wrote down that it's really hard sometimes to take that step it's really hard to get back in a game when you've jumped in a game before and you failed or you've fallen or you didn't, you know, score, whatever analogy you want to put with this. Um, I don't know if you're like this, but like for me, I came from another network marketing company. It was really hard to start over. I want, I'm on a 
might have made it look easy. I might have, you know, posted like I was really happy that I was starting over, but it was really hard. I had to learn that I had a mental prison there that was telling me, Jess, you already failed at this. What makes you think you can succeed now? And every day I have to limit those voices because I came from something that didn't work before. So now I want to jump back and invest and put my skin in the game when I've already done that and it didn't work in my favor, when I didn't succeed, when I didn't have something to, you know, go off and show off. And so sometimes that's where that self-sabotage and those prisoning thoughts come back in because you have been in situations before that have trapped you, that have caused you to fall. And, and you're scared to take steps again. You're scared to put yourself out there. You're scared to believe that you have what it takes. You're scared to even believe that you deserve to be successful or that you're worthy of this. You're so scared that you're not making steps. Like I said, it's easier on the bench. So you're not, you don't want to necessarily get in the game because that's nerve wracking. But It's not a matter of not taking steps. It's a matter of learning how to walk through those traps, to walk through those failures, to walk through those times that you fell and you got back up. I don't know why we do this as women, but it's almost like if we fail at something, we just never try again. Now, I don't want any part of that again. I don't want to humiliate myself again, but success doesn't work that way. Success is, oh my God, I humiliated myself, but I'm going to get up and do it again. I, I might've dropped the ball last time, but pass it to me because I'm going to shoot again. It's, I might've not you know, succeeded last time, but I'm getting back into the game. I might have given up too fast, but I'm going to stay consistent. Like success comes from that rep- repetitive decision in your mind to keep going, to walk through situations, not to give up when a situation doesn't work in your favor. And so I just, I feel like that's really all I wanted to talk about tonight is just, are you really in the game? Who, who are you doing this for? Why are you doing this? Who did you used to be and who do you need to be? There's a difference. And if you're falling back to the girl you used to be, you need to stop and get in the game. You need to invest in your future self. You need to invest in what you see happening. Don't look at what's available to you and let it pass you by and reach and never grab it. Don't look and see opportunity, but be scared to, to act on it. Don't don't hate when pressure comes your way, but see it as that opportunity to get to that next level, to that next dimension of you. Do not shy away from who you are becoming because the world needs that version. And there are people, not only your family, but there are people who need that version for you to show up so that they can go to that next level for themselves. What we have together as a team is something so beautiful. We're a team and we're winning, but some of you are not playing. And some of you have benched yourself. And some of you guys are on the court, but you're scared to make the moves or when the pressure comes in, you freak. And you have to realize we're in a team setting right now and we all have the ability to win. No one needs to be benched anymore. No one needs to watch from the sidelines. No one needs this. This isn't a talent um, contest. This isn't someone's better than the other person. This is, we all have the opportunity. Are you going after it? Are you fully committing to yourself? Are you investing in yourself and in your future? Are you seeing your dreams and knowing it's time? It's time. I don't have time to waste. I have to run toward it. And so that's really all I wanted to encourage you with because I feel like if you can just take a few moments tonight when we get off here and pen and paper down, where am I self-sabotaging myself? Where am I hiding places of my heart that I don't, I'm scared to open up about? I'm scared to go back to that place because I don't really want that girl to come back out. Where are those places that we've pushed aside that we need to heal? Where is part of your journey that you've been scared to step out in? What is holding you back and in, in, quietly speaking, insecurities in your life. Where are those places so that tonight you can jot them down and be like, no, scratch that. I'm in the game now, girl. I'm in the game and you can't take me out because this is my game and this is for my life and this is my future and these are my kids and they're watching their mom and my 
my time is now. I have to step up and I got to leave my skin in the game. And so I just want to encourage you tonight to try to take some thoughts out before we start this week, before we start a new month, to say, you know what? I have an opportunity. I see it. Now, how do I build the boat to get me to it? How do I put the work in to get me to it? So I hope that helps somebody tonight. I don't want to keep you long because um, I know you guys have so much going on and I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule, but I hope that you can just take some time tonight to self-reflect because your next level, your next version of yourself is waiting on you tonight. Tomorrow you're going to wake up and you're going to be one step closer to those dreams. You're going to be one step closer to that girl that you in, were intended to be. You're going to be one step closer to looking at your family in the eyes and being like, I'm so damn proud of what I've accomplished. But you don't give up now. You don't, you don't set yourself out. You get right back up and tomorrow you get in the game and you leave that skin in the game because this is for you. It's not for me. It's for you. So tonight, take that time. You let your thoughts just come to you so that you can get to that next level that you need to go to. So I hope you ladies have a great night and we will talk later.